Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Pyre Community Right Night, which means, of course, some good old-fashioned multiplayer Pyre, featuring first and foremost none other than the members of the Right Club Discord server, the place for all things multiplayer Pyre. And if you're interested in getting more involved in multiplayer Pyre, then look no further, because you can join said Discord group by clicking on that link right there. But those of you in chat, you are not off the hook. No, 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 because you see the red circle with the white L below chat. You click on that and you'll find all the various requests you can make today, including things ranging from selecting players, exiles, mastery, songs, arenas, even Titan Stars are all fair game. So without further ado, let's hop in here. We'll reset ourselves to our defaults. There we are. I will hop into Discord and let me know if there's anyone who would like to get us started today. All right, I am in Discord. How's everybody doing? <laughs> What's up, Lilac? Artemis Fowl, how are you? Do we take requests from Hades too? Artemis Fowl. You know better than this. Oh no, I suppose from a song standpoint, no, unfortunately, uh, this is a legitimate request, but unfortunately, we cannot do that because uh, we used to have a Tariq bot. However, well, we used to have several Tariq bots. Uh, I'm afraid they all bit the dust one by one by one, and I don't know when the last time we looked into it was, but at least as things currently stand, we do not have a workable Tariq bot anymore. Yeah, I know, I know. It's been a while, actually, now that you mention it. But that does mean that all we can do at present is the, the Pyre soundtrack, or at least the game, the songs from Pyre that are accessible in-game. We have added a few that would usually not be accessible from the uh, multiplayer menu, but we have modded them in. Things like, where is it? Starts here, Surviving Exile, Moon Touched, all this stuff. These are songs that would not typically be usable in uh, versus mode, but we have added those in addition to, you know, all the triumvirate themes. All right, Lilac is interested in getting in, and how's it going, Irotor? Good to see you as well. Knights of the Sea, in that case, will be the selection. Gotcha. Okay, let me get an invite for Lilac, but we are still awaiting a second person, if there is anyone else who would like to get in to face off against Lilac here. Let me get you the invite, should now be on its way. Failure, did you look somewhat recently at that? I wrote her can join in a couple of minutes. Okay, maybe we can get our rotor in as the second person in that case. Cause yeah, I just don't remember ever it's been a long time since I remember last discussing the state of Tariq Bot. I know there was somewhat significant effort we put into it back when we were going through Tariq Bots rather quickly, but it, it just seemed like it got to the point where we accepted our fate. There was not going to be much of a way to make it work. Oh, also, hold on. Do I have a controller plugged in? I think I do. Before we get a second player in, it is important that I unplug that. Oh, okay. All right. I see what you mean.
It's boat o'clock. And in fact, let's see, if I rotor comes in on controller lilac, you're on keyboard mouse, then we actually should be able to know definitively who's going to be player one and who's player two, so I could start setting you up here. Lilac, what is your uh, preferred triumvirate today? Oh, I forgot I'm on VC. Uh, d dissidents. Oh, okay. That works. Nice and easy in that case. Let's see. Throw that on. Throw that on. And should be go to, good to go there. Artemis Fowl approves. And I could, I could make some assumptions about what I anticipates I wrote will say for his setup not that I not that I'm trying to speak for I wrote here but I guess what I'm saying is I'm kind of trying to speak for I wrote here how's it going core hello hey I wrote how are you hello let me get you an invite I rotor. There you are. Was I right in? Oh, let me let me not uh, frame the question that way. Uh, which triumvirate would you like to be today, I rotor? I have drawn is fine. Okay. Okay, so uh, we do have a boat and we have a Knights of the Sea, but otherwise nothing directly affecting your team composition here. That much looks to be up to you. And I think in that case, why don't we get ourselves started? What's up, Camilo? How's it going? Oh, okay, a late talisman request. We can still honor this. You heed the summons to the Hulk of Ores. You shall take part here in a glorious tradition. The stars themselves shall be your witnesses. Dissidents, stand ready. The withdrawn, stand prepared. The right. All right. We actually did get a talisman request banning prayer beads. So there is one request affecting your team composition here. You cannot use the prayer beads talisman. Oh, and also, let me just make sure that you actually have controls here because you don't. Thank you. Thank that you. would probably help if I gave you that. Thank you. <laughs> it's like, hold on a second. <laughs> I was clicking a lot. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so it's Speedy Jody. Remember, no prayer beads for either player on any of their exiles. Demon in the first spot on one side, Web Lanthorn Imp with Raji on the other. Typhoon Bottle Gilman is Lilac's second choice. Irotor also goes with a speedy Joe Dariel.
And a speedy saluting stowaway in the last spot for Lilac. Or as I wrote her, doubles down on the demons with a meta this bullet. All right, here we go, our first match of the day. And uh, neither player awfully, clean, awfully keen on picking up that orb. I wrote her eventually does take and does have a portal. That was the thing that he prioritized setting up. It is very close to Lilac's fire, but ultimately don't think he needed it as he jumps in with his demon. One of those demons, that was the speedy Jody that went in. Here's the other, the meta Vizpoleth. Using that boat magic a bit, but that's not enough to avoid the stowaway. Vizpoleth versus the stowaway again, but Gilman returns. And he sneaks in, and with Seize Chance active, that's a 25 damage plunge rather than the usual 15. Raji. Broder setting up the demons. And gets rid of the last of Lilac's defenders. Oh! Had a brief moment there where Lilac was defenseless. Waited a little bit, but was still able to carve out just enough time and space to get that quick throw off there. Lilac now with Jody. Knocks back one of the defenders, but the other one able to get the stop. And I wrote her once again with the dangerous portal play. The first of the exiles that went through that portal vanished. But then Lilac, with a counterattack with Gilman, almost able to pull it off, but Iroder gets the stop. Jody, that might be our biggest jump yet! Oh my goodness, the airtime! There's the portal play again. There is the Celestial Spike, vanishing with the throws. And now, Iroder finishes with the 30 damage throw for that round. to Vizpaleth, the scorer of that throw. One who has those banishing throws, and there's a reason why we've called it the Meta Demon, as once again, that is the one scoring here for Iroder. And at this point, one score potentially all Iroder would need from any of his exiles, and it was nearly the imp right there. Not sure if that was just to set up a, another advanced portal, or whether that was actually a scoring attempt. But uh, either way, it was close, and Iroder could still look to use that portal, and there it is. The withdrawal GG. GG. Well played, you two. Thus end this night's proceedings. All right, well, let's head on back. Until the next right. As that was a boat. Knights of the Sea, no prayer beads right to get things started, but let us know if there's anything we'd like to see for the next one. Otherwise, we'll just reset to our defaults. Grand Ceremony for the song. Oh, I went past it. Oh, and then we'll have Rage of Demons in the queue. Okay, just remind me, ignore. Anor, no worries. <laughs> Don't ignore the request. <laughs> that is probably the first time I've ever botched your name like that. <laughs> That's a bad one. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, anything else we would like to see for the next one? Freudian slip, perhaps? I don't know. We'll have to see. Does he ignore the request later on? Only time will tell. Two saps. Wait, what? Hold on. Was that supposed to be an exile request? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I was like, wait Sorry. a second. I assumed it was an exile request. Then I read the fine print. I was like, hold on. Something isn't adding up here. Okay. Exiles. Two saps apiece. Okay. 
Wait, right. wait no, I, I, I was thinking, like, one, two saps shared between the two players. Oh, okay. So, one sap per person. Gotcha. Okay, thank you for clarifying. Mm-hmm. Anything else we would like to add to this next one? So we have the song, we have some of the exiles locked in here. I mean, I suppose it's possible if anyone wanted to further elaborate on the exile setup, that is still possible. In addition to, of course, masteries and talismans all still on the table. But seeing nothing else at the moment... Why don't we get this one started? The dissidents shall now face the withdrawal. Welcome. All right. Who shall conduct the rites? goes with the Typhoon Bottle on Oralek in the first spot. Exile. And Web Lanthorn Raji for Iroder's lead. It's a speedy Volfred in the second spot for Lilac. We know we're expecting one sap per team as per Lilac's request. So I suppose it shouldn't come as too much of a surprise that both the saps themselves are there, but as for the talisman selection, still a little unusual to see the speedy Volfred, and then nutrition stick on Palmus is how Iroder will set up the sap. I didn't actually think about my setup until just now. I was going to say, I'm not sure if it was intentional, but that is technically a true Nightwings team. Or a, an old school Nightwings team. And then it is uh, Vizpaleth, the demon, it was the last choice for our rotor. And there is the Typhoon Bottle activating. Now our rotor can go through the portal, which does speed things up a bit, but not quite enough time to get the range on that throw. There is the speedy Bullfred, but it's a different type of speed with Palmus, with the extra blinking distance from that nutrition stick. Interesting to see those two race. I wrote her once again eyeing the portal, and this time able to sidestep the defender and to throw it in for 30. Orlek, quickly banished. As is the rest of Lilac's team, so once again, I wrote her finding himself plagued by that Typhoon bottle. But the portal definitely does help to mitigate that effect a bit. This time, cutting the throw a little bit short, just 18. The dissidents seem to be falling behind. 
Here is very scary. Infinite stamina of his Paleth, but Lilac fended off that demonic attack. And now with infinite stamina on Tizo. Stopped by the opposing Raji, and once again, I wrote her, slowed by Typhoon Bottle, but then once the defender comes back, you see the power of that infinite stamina demon. But once again, Lilac unfazed. Fred, not speedy enough on that occasion, I'm afraid. There is the portal. The Lilac, ready to defend. Is Paleth for Iroder. Now everyone down on Lilac's side, but probably not Iroder's preferred exile to be moving with that Typhoon Bottle active, as Palmas is quite slow in that situation. But Tizo nearly snuck past there for Lilac. Big cast for Iroder's Viz Paleth, but trapped in the corner. She goes down. Palmas slowly saunters away, only to blink right next to the pyre. Lilac, though, did not fall for the faint. The dissidents are banished to the last. There is Paleth. A true aimed Time enough to, to throw it in for the full 30 damage. Poor Lex. Sacrifices Tizo to the Blood Gods. And Orlek, well, I suppose it worked, because he does plunge here for 25. I'm sorry, Tizo. But it does mean there is now no Orlek in this round. He did not have prayer beads. And that means everyone is down right now for Lilac. But it's a similar situation to what Iroder has found himself in in the past, and that Typhoon Bottle has proven quite effective, although eventually, Iroder is able to get that 30 damage throw off. Now, one score, at least from Viz Paleth, if it's full damage or near full damage, would be enough for Iroder to at least eliminate Lilac starting higher life. But I do believe we saw Lilac took take a, a fairly significant amount of rekindling. Might have been the full 50 from Volfred. Tizo playing a little ring around the rosy there. And somehow he made it out of that exchange, and he's plunging here for 25. Orlek down, and Tizo did not have prayer beat, so he's down, and that means no one is there at the moment for Lilac. But with no portal, Iroder is finding himself a little starved for mobility. But once the defender comes back, he can sprint forward, throw it in, and there is that 50 rekindling. As anticipated, it is quite a bit here. So Lilac still holding on. I wrote her with some work to do yet. This Paleth, though, follows up with another 30 damage throw, and at this point, one score from I wrote her could be enough. Vizpaleth, once again though, slowed by that Typhoon Bottle. Is it going to be a difference maker? It was on that occasion. Applying Lilac enough time to get a defender back in position. Now it's Palmas. He stopped. Portal right next to the orb. And there is the deciding score. The withdrawn prevail. GG. Their adversaries confidently thwarted. Well played, you two. The right is ended. All right. Well, let's head on back. Until the stars align. And let us know, chat, if there is anything you'd like to see for the next one. Otherwise, at the very least, we'll reset ourselves here. Oh, we had, we did have the song request. <clears throat> oh no, I'm supposed to ignore it, right? For Rage of Demons.
Is there anything else that we would like to have for the next one? Oh, okay. Manly Tinder stand. We will have uh, both players taking Manly. Whoa! Whoa! Wait. That escalated quickly. To who? I assume by this you mean. Oh, I. Oh, okay. Avoid the Beyonce reference. Avoid the Beyonce reference. Avoid the Beyonce reference. Wait, what? What's the Beyonce reference? Um. Use the ring for two characters. But whatever you do, if you like it, do not put a ring on it. I don't actually listen to Beyonce, so... <laughs> Alright. Yes, use a ring on Manly and one other character of the player's choice. And, uh, Lilac, that arena request, I'm assuming... Well... I will assume nothing. Where would you like for this next match to be? Hmm. Just gonna very slowly pan through the different <coughs> arenas yeah. to see if maybe there might be one that you prefer. I I I, I believe so. Yes. <laughs> might it be this one, per chance? Per per chance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have Rage of Demons on the boat. Both players take Manly. Put a ring on Manly and one other exile of their choosing. Will that be all? Looks like it may be. So let's get started. I hope this isn't offensive to ask, but I've been lurking on a bunch of your previous streams, including, like, your one from yesterday, and do, do you sleep? I what is this sleep of which you speak? Welcome. I, I realize that there are probably streamers that have gone on for much longer than you, but I must say I'm quite impressed. It's, uh, you know, I mean, the Saturday stream is usually the longest one that I do. So that uh, one is the most, uh, the also most difficult, my, I guess, from that through standpoint. Through my lurking, I've been saving up my lid coins. Oh, okay. <laughs> very good, uh, very good. I, will not, I won't elaborate any further. Oh, I can guess what that might mean. <laughs> I have a theory. So, of course, we know there's going to be Manly. He's going to have a ring. One of the key questions, though, that uh, the requester, Edgy Shrek, left up to the players is uh, who is going to be the other ring bearer. I mean, Frodo Baggins, obviously. And to Edgy Shrek, um, you're close. <laughs> you're close. Hmm. <laughs> Who's gonna be the lucky exile? That lucky is a strong word. Yeah. Uh, Well, it is Bertrude, according to Lilac. I was actually considering marrying Manly to Iggy, but I, I don't know what I'd do without without the, the Speedy. Mm, okay, and it was uh, Zoxiana, I believe, in Iroder's case, who had the other ring. We do once again find ourselves. 
with uh, demons on the boat. I mean, you love to see it. There is Zoxiana. She gets it started with a 20 damage plunge. There is the extra air time from Iggy. Sends Bertrude flying, and then he goes flying! Oh, if only, if only that went straight into the pyre. It would have been incredible. He does get the score, but it just doesn't quite hit the same when it takes a few steps afterward. Oh, and then a quick salute, followed by an immediate blink for my rotor to set up a very nifty manly plunge. Now Jody, Fry Rotor, plunges here for another 30. Iggy, block, now banished. Manly versus Manly, Manly wins. Soxiana follows up with another 20 damage plunge. down. My rotor moves in to claim the orb with Manly and then blinks in. And with that means one more score, potentially all our rotor would need at least to eliminate the starting pyre life. But uh, once again with a sap apiece, may see some rekindling as it is now Lilac with the demon plunge. And Harp Push sets up this plunge, and there is the rekindling that we anticipated we might see. It's 50. So still a ways to go in this match. Here comes our rotor. Jody is blocked, but now has it back. Now she goes down. Here's Lilac with Iggy. He's blocked. And he is eventually banished. Now Jody. She goes down, though. Bertrude sees a little bit of space to work with. And with no defenders back, is able to speed in there. And that's another 30 damage. Iggy knocks back one defender, claims the orb. But gets blocked before he can make it in. Now Zoxiana for Irota. Switches into Manly. Oh, but the sapling comes in to save the day for Lilac, at least temporarily. But it just allows Iroder to switch into Vizpaleth, which actually turned into more damage on that plunge. And at this point, one score could be all that Iroder needs. And since we have already seen the second life bar, we know that would be definitive. The Beast Oxiana, no, not this time. Here's Bertrude. Changes sides, but does go down. As does Iggy, and a bit of an opportunity here for Iroder if he's quick. And there it is. The withdrawn GG. The scribes themselves surely have taken note. Well played, you two. The right, it's complete. Oh, I just saw what Iggy, uh, not, not Iggy Shrek, uh, Camilo run. just said, and, um, I'm not, I'm not gonna say anything. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Well, let's set ourselves I, back to I'm our not, defaults. I've, I still got a few streams to go, though, before I reach the full extent of my power. Oh, goodness. That, that phrasing is terrifying. <laughs> All right, I don't think we have anything in the queue anymore. So at the moment, just working from a, a blank slate here. So let us know if there is anything we would like to add. Oh, we get some Titan stars in here. Beware. Be oh, be no, that, that is true. Yes, we should beware. That is, that is correct. That is a factually correct statement. <laughs> Camilo's like, okay, I respect that. I respect that. On the on the saving up for uh, Falcon Ron side, not on 
the uh, you know summoning Eastlock side. No, that's that's not that's not a good thing. And dread think, design I, I, as well. I, I think my timing was bad. <laughs> I mean, having this at the same time that we're, you know, summoning, like, the evil demon that's trying to take over the world, you know, that, that may or may not be good timing, but... Okay. It's a double ring with characters that, well, whoever is is most fitting... Well, actually, I was actually I was I was going to say Orlek and Volfred, but if you want to. Oh do no! Okay, no, that's fair. Hence, hence my my comment. Okay, so that means we have two exiles, two talismans, song, Titan stars. Oh, let me actually activate those. That is a lot of stuff. Is there anything else we'd be looking for? Oh! What are you talking about? That's totally the same thing. You know, dread design, grand design, dread ceremony. It's all the same, right? And at the pit? Okay. That is understandable. Okay, I think that's just about everything. So let's get going. The Titan Stars. Okay. Yep. There be Slock. Beware. Oh, hold on. Just for the sake of truly having everything. There you go. <laughs> the Titan Stars. Good evening, exiles. You stand upon the pit of Melith. Here you shall be tested by your adversary. We soon shall see who is the most deserving. Dissidents, stand prepared. The withdrawn stand ready. Who shall conduct the rites? All right, so we have Volfred plus Orlek with rings, but the third exile is up to the players here, so there is still some room to express themselves with a, whatever angle they'd like to take. Uh, would... Would it be preferred that it's for both exiles? I mean, both players, or for just one person? For the I... the exile stuff? Uh huh. Because I didn't you. think about that part. Up to you. Uh. I assumed it was going to be for both of you. Then, then that that's probably the best. So there's Orlek. I'd actually be curious to see what his respawn time is with the plus two hope from the ring, which might seem like just a small number, but I imagine it would still be a somewhat significant dent in his banishment time. Right, there are some cases where we do asymmetric requests, but it's pretty unusual. And technically speaking, we have a rule for if you are doing an asymmetric request while you are playing, you cannot do something that inherently favors you over your opponent, because then, you know, it's just like, all right, well, you could just request a whole bunch of tough stuff to sabotage the other person. And that's probably not a dynamic that we should be encouraging. Ignatius. Oh, I wrote her with a little bit of a twist there, going with Ignarius instead.
Alright, so there is the other half of the deal. Ring on Volfred as well. Here is the third exile. Totally up to Iroder, and he went with an exploding Gilman. Gilman will also be the third wheel for Lilac as well. Oh, okay, yeah, definitely a different direction for Irotor, but does have the, uh, the double rings. And it is Speedy Ignarius, one of those two ringed characters on Irotor's side, getting us off to a quick start with that infinite stamina demons. They, are, they will always be terrifying. Parker. Gets him back, and he'll plunge. Gilman now for Lilac. Speed past one defender and plunges here. Good for 15. Volfred versus Iggy. Volfred first to the orb, but then Iggy banishes him. And enough time for Iggy to throw that in for 30. Orlek versus Iggy. Orlek banished, although he sends everyone flying. Parker, oh, leaps over and in. Good for 20. Iggy, once more. That 30 damage plunge drops Lilac down to 5, so one more would trigger any rekindling that Lilac has. Again, with uh, lots of saps today, you imagine there could be more rekindling there, but here is Orlek. He plunges for 25, but with no prayer beads, that means he is gone in this round. Iggy knocks back the defenders, creates space for that plunge, but there is the rekindling, and it is once again the full 50. And it does also mean no Ignarius in this round. And room for Lilac to speed through there with Gilman. He goes in for 15, but now he's gone in this round. A duel of the demons. I wrote her. Gets the orb. Takes out Orlek. Yeah, it's uh, about like 17, 18 second respawn time for Orlek. With the, the ring on and the wall bouncing jump. You'll love to see it. Finger guns and all. 30 damage on that one from I wrote her. Orlek trying to answer. Knocks back the defenders. Just can't get the finishing touches though. Banishes one of them. And that might have been the difference maker because now Lilac able to get that plunge. It does mean though no Orlac in one score. Potentially all I wrote her would need. And there it is. The withdrawn prevail. GG. GG. Well played, you two. The right is done. Uh, just asking for a friend, is it possible? Theoretically speaking, Until the stars align. when it comes to modding the game, to have any jump or throw that goes off the wall and then directly into the fire, to have a damage multiplier, just asking for a friend. It came as a anchor exists, maybe, but never tried it. <laughs> All right. Well, no worries. No worries. Okay. Let's see. We do have some requests here. The, the theme of last week's right night was boat, and this week's is marriage. Apparently. It's another marriage match.
Oh, one other question I had was given how we have seen the uh, Titan Star's hangover effect for most notably whenever someone takes the Titan Stars, they give bonuses directly to their stats. However, I'm not sure if we've ever established, does that also happen with the extra brain cell from Mislock? Because if so, that means that although Iroder had an extra brain cell in that match, is he actually down one brain cell in this match? Oh, ho, ho. I ask you this. <laughs> Excellent question. All right, is there anything else setup-wise that we're looking for here, or is it just the combo exile talisman request that we saw? I mean, I'm just saying, if we could make that happen, Camilo, I might be interested. <laughs> I might be interested. Some pinball pyre. Alright, but not seeing any other requests, so I think we're good to get this one started. The dissidents well, I heard the water. For a second I thought we might have gotten a random vote, but no, it's the Fall of Solium. All right, so we're going with the double rings here once again. Someone could mod in the dissidence orb effect. I don't even remember what that is. Uh, I I think it's like the. I only know this because I watched a playthrough just today. I think it's like the ball. Gravity does not affect the ball at all. Like uh -huh. like it. Like, it bounces way higher and falls really slow, I think. Oh. Is that a- that's a thing with only the dissidents? Wait, did you mean during their liberation right? I don't know. Anor just said, I mean, if someone could mod in the dissidents orb effect, but I don't know what the dissidents orb effect is. Uh, I- I- I was assuming it meant, like, for some reason, I assumed it meant, like, whatever happens... Oh, during... in their liberation right. Low gravity. Yeah. Okay. Maybe yeah. I just don't remember facing them in a liberation right. I might not have. I just don't remember. Interesting. Alright, well, there is one ring on Almer. But, uh, Lilac did not take a ring on the stowaway. So that'll have to mean the remaining two exiles get a ring. One of them will be Ignarius. And Erota will go with what chat was expecting to see, the stowaway plus Almer combo. Whereas, for Lilac, it's Jody and Ignarius. Curious to hear what people think about that one. Oh, okay, well, you see, the thing is, Iroder has now just made it so that uh, the Stowaway and Almer, they, they are now insignificant. They are, they are a side piece to uh, the main show, which is, of course, the wonderful and awe-inspiring fashion of Gareth. Was that Gareth? I don't think it was, and therefore, it does not matter. All that matters is when Gareth scores. All that matters is when Gareth scores. <clears throat> Look at that, beautiful, 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 glorious, unmatched, unmatched, that man's style. You see, it's just not the same. It's, it's just not the same, but it isn't Gareth. There he is. No, Gareth. What did they do to you? 
Iggy and Jody is so unpopular, I approve, says Anor. Oh, there he is. There he is. This one is, this is going, even though I'm not doing too hot, this is going out to someone on Tumblr who, one of my Tumblr mutuals who really likes that ship. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, and Iggy powers through, finding his way in for a 30 damage plunge. Almer. Boring. Boring. No one wants to see Almer. Don't, don't insult my boy. <laughs> That's more like this. This is who we came to see. That's more like. Oh, oh, oh. No, that's 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 not part of the script. <laughs> that is though. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Pure style. You're a Gareth fan, I see. I mean, he's only objectively the best character in the game. Fair. Stowit. Stopped here. Oh, and I wrote her at a sneaky exile hiding in the corner there. Did not even see they were there and uh, passed over, jumped in, and took the win. The stylish third wheel. Uh, no, 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 no. Not, not stylish, though. Not stylish. In fact, I don't even know if the pass was from Gareth, in which case, mm, decidedly very bland. Uninspiring. Until the next bright. All right. Well, let us know if there's anything we'd like to see for the next one. And I wrote her says we ought to head over to the ridge. Core, <laughs> what is this? What, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> it's the function where... Is it the KMO one? Or is it the... Liberation Ride Barker one? Well, probably more the Liberation Ride. Right. The Barker Liberation, Distance Liberation one? Uh... Liberation Dissidence one. Okay. That is pretty hilarious that that's the name of it, though. <laughs> How do we describe this? Hmm. Well, you see, the, the orb kind of defies gravity in a way, so, you know, we could label it like zero G or something. No, I mean, that's goes, maybe too complicated. It, it kind of it kind of goes, dare I say, crazy. The ball. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, speaking of crazy, is there anything crazy we'd like to set up for this one? Or is the Ridge of Goal all we had in mind? Oh, there we go. That's a little more like it. And in fact, is this our first customized off of the day? Crazy? I was on? crazy once. They, they, they locked me in a room full of imps. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how the meme goes. Alright, well for this one, with Customize Off, that means we'll have randomized Exiles, Masteries, and Talismans. Won't even get to see what those things are in advance, just gonna get thrown straight into the action. And uh, I am surprised that it took us this long to do a Customize Off match. But I suppose we're overdue. We'll see what the game has schemed up for us here. The Dissidents... I, I hope I haven't been like uh, interrupting your announcing up. Uh, here, here we go. Or anything. Oh, no worries. Let's see. We have. Uh, oh, the most stylish man on the downside. Wonderful. Along with another savage who is decidedly less stylish. And uh, a harp on Lilac's side. That was an imp, or rather a worm throw for my rotor. He does also have an imp. And then he has Headwind the Nomad. 
Here is Deluge once more. Decidedly no seize chance, because that definitely would have been active. If he did have that. Oh, was that Luminous Idol on? Oh, Luminous Idol on Deluge, but that's uh, Cursed Talisman on Messenger Imp, preventing him from picking up the orb. So that means Hedwin had to plunge into the pyre on that occasion. There is the Black Hoof, and Iroder is in a tricky place here. Lilac was technically defenseless, but there wasn't anything Iroder could do with just Messenger Imp. It's fast to wait for Deluge to return, and Deluge goes down. Almer down as well, and here is Deluge. He stopped again. Iroder once again in this tough place. There is uh, not much he can do. Although, if he is standing on top of the pyre, it is possible to score with the Black Hoof Exile. But, Messenger Imp went down. Back to Deluge. Deluge's throw has enough on it. So that'll be 15 damage. Palmer. Back to Soxiana. Edwin with the banishment. Deluge again. Throw. Good again for another 15. Deluge first to the orb. But he's banished here. Soxiana. Suddenly a little bit lonely here, but not that it matters. Oh, and with Astral Eye, a little bit of extra damage, in fact. 28 on that plunge. It does mean now Gareth, all by himself, he goes down. And Almer returns just in time to make that stop. What I wrote her does, in fact, get that Black Hoof plunge he was looking for. It is possible if the Black Hoof Exile is standing on top of the pyre when they receive a pass from a different Exile, as I wrote her just demonstrated. There's a 15 damage throw once again from Deluge. And one score potentially. All that I wrote her would need here. It would need to come from Hedwin, but here he is. Oh, but he hesitated. He came to a bit of a stop in front of the pyre, and that might have been just what Lilac needed. Buy a little more time to get a defender in. The banishment, but Hedwin jumps in, and this time, will take the win. They overwhelm their adversaries utterly. Gigi? The ceremony is complete. Well played, you two. All right, let's head on back. Until the next right. And it looks like between Camilo and Kor, we have a couple people who'd like to get in soon. So maybe what we'll do is we'll have this one be our last match between Lilac and Iroder. And then we could do a double switch and get Camilo and Kor in after that. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay. Turn customize back on. Um, Anor, I'm afraid, <laughs> I was gonna say, I cannot read Cyrillic. <laughs> Favorite exiles, is that what that says? Because I'm gonna have to take your word for it. <laughs> All right, and then we have Titan Stars. Wait, wh oh, wait, what? What, what? Is, what does that mean? <laughs> What does that mean? Oh, I see. No, at first I just read that as Titan Stars, no arena, period. I was like, how do we do Pyre with no arena? <laughs> no, just no, sp it's, a, it's a meta request. It's an anti-request request, if you will. It's not even good Cyrillic. I, I would not know the difference. <laughs> That's what I figured, no worries anymore. Okay, so favorite exiles, 
Um, oh, I guess technically that came in before I wrote her no arena exile or talisman request, but it is pretty consistent with that. So basically just, you know, take what you want. Um, but there's no, there's no arenas! I mean, was it sympathy-wise, oh, or I'm was sorry. it classes? Or, like, the ones who you played? Uh, I, 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 I didn't understand what the, the Titan Star request meant, and then I completely forgot about it, I'm sorry. No, no worries. We can, we can do a vote for the, the, the first one for the next couple people. Excellent. And we might get a random vote here, you just don't know. But sorry, what was your question, Arrotor? Is it favorite exiles and as the ones you usually play or the ones you like the most? Like from a like gameplay a versus a character standpoint? Mm. I mean, in order to, well, let's see. And or could just cue hers because hers was a character request. <laughs> the the ones we like best as characters, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, rather than play style. Gameplay. Okay. Alright. Let's jump in then. If anyone from my friend group is watching this stream, because some because I share the Twitch link with them, if if anyone from my friend group is watching, they already know who I'm going to pick. <laughs> okay, I'm curious to see. The withdrawn. Welcome. I if I were to guess one character for you, it would have been this. Perhaps because it may or may not be your Steam picture. Does give it away a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that 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 might have been a hint. <laughs> oh, interesting. We have the stowaway on one side, Almer on the other. Oh. Uh -uh. And here we see the players in their natural habitat selecting what is objectively the inferior of the Savage class characters. Dalbert, Dalbert is the second choice for Iroder. I was, I was thinking maybe I could do the trio, but then I realized I, I, I love him. So rekindling Gilman is the last choice for Lilac. Who is the final selection for Iroder? I love everyone, honestly. I feel like that's a bit of a surprising pick for Iroder there, though. Except for Deluge. I don't, I don't love Deluge. Oh, okay. All right. Well, there is a 20 damage plunge from Ulmer to get us started. And then his dad follows up with a 20 damage plunge after that. Almer again, this time going the throwing route. Now, perhaps Tamitha's turn. Oh, I wrote her moving all the pieces in. But it's Dolbert. With the final move there, plunging for 20. Dad do be ballin', apparently. Here's Gilman, and it's a race to the Pyre, and he wins that race. Tamitha, blocked here, switches into Almer, but he's banished. The opposing Almer, he's banished. 
Oh, sorry, that was the stowaway. And then here is the rekindling. So Tamitha plunges, but Lilac still holding on. Albert gets rid of the orb and then picks it back up. Reactivating, was it the Luminous Idol? To set up the triple jump plunge. They vastly outperformed their adversaries. GG. The ceremony GG. is complete. Well played, you two. Now let's head on back. Until the stars align. And as we were saying, this may be a good time for us to switch over, get Core and Camilo both in, if that still works. For you guys. Yep. Yeah, sure. All right. Thanks for stopping by, I wrote her lilac. Good to have you. Is it okay to like still stay in the VC to watch? Like I'll probably be muted. Just watch from the VC from. If you the... want to. Yeah. Cool. I mean, I would say this hasn't been an issue for a long time. Once upon a time, we had times where we had many people in at at the same time and that start to get a little chaotic but ah uh, yeah if if we have like five people in there and people aren't muted yeah. then it starts to get a little Got it. too hectic Got but it. Got i think it. it's cool. fine that's true we also have the the cackling imp chat if that is of interest a safe place to cackle oh dear <laughs> oh <laughs> all right well let me uh let me get some new invites oh, out here and let me oh, free oh, you, Lilac. Freedom, thank you. Alright. I'll probably just be watching from Twitch now. Thank, All right. thank no you. No worries. GG's. Good Fair to get well. you in. Alright, and now let me Oh, I've never tried from that page before. Huh, interesting. Alright, well, still like this one better. Let's see. Do, do, do. We are looking for a core. And if I had something that rhymed off the top of my head with Camilo, I would say it, but I don't know what does rhyme with that. Oh, I thought that whole time that that was Camilo on the, the left side. I was like, oh, Camilo, go in Pyre Hearts when that very well may be what Core wanted. It's a bold choice, making a statement. Let me make sure that you have controls, Camilo, because you did not. Now you do. Yay. Okay, and remind me, do we need to make any control adjustments between Camilo and, and Lilac? There we go, okay. Now let me just set you guys up over here. Let's see, we have, this is gonna be core. This one's gonna be Camilo. And then Core is on the Fire Hearts. Which one did you take, Camilo? Oh, Tempers. There you are. Okay. Oh, true. We did technically have a boat request in the queue from Lilac. That is correct. That is correct. Oh, all right then. We are going all in on the boat magic. Not only is it the boat, it is also all demons. Uh, no worries, I knew what you meant. Preset mastery, or rather, preset uh, song, I should say. Preset mastery is a different thing. 
Oh, I see the rage of demons. I understand the uh, the reason for it, but I'm afraid both kind of fit. Wait, who is? Oh, well, the Tempers theme is Rage of Demons. How about this? Rather than doing preset theme this way, we'll just manually set it for Rage of Demons, and then we'll manually do uh, Knights of the Sea after that. Exactly. Best of both worlds. Okay. Is there anything else we're looking for here? Or will that be all? Seems like that might be it. So let's get going. The Tempers. Welcome. All right. Oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> remote play. I immediately yeah, I reminded that remote play hates whenever we have Camilo in. Um. Yeah. You, I don't know if you need to change my controller or not. Yeah. Let's try it. I mean, Worth it a shot. Before, but that was before Camilo got in. So. Everything was when I get in. Come on. Try this, maybe? No. No, okay. Well, we'll. Right, and I can't pause it. Try that. No. Okay. Last Always one. Do it then. Try. Oh, come on. Well. Well. What about this I, one? I cannot. Still no? Okay. Did you try uh, unplugging, replugging? You try it. Give that a shot. Oh. There we go. Okay. Cautiously optimistic. Knock on wood. So all demons on the boat, and Cole will lead with a speedy Iggy. Milo will go exploding Vizpaleth. And a leeching Jody for core. Milo goes Speedy Jody. Kors Vizpaleth will have Titan Tooth. And Camilo's Iggy will be quick throwing with the Star Splinter. Oh, I kind of know. That's nice. Uh, okay. Wonderful. Well, I'm controlling core. Never mind. Are you both controlling the Pyre Hearts right now? Yep. Somehow, I expected this to happen. Okay. Um, maybe now. Hold on a second. Let's try switching core around. This might end up putting core on player two. No, no, I can't. Probably you can't do higher, I guess. Yeah, let's just try this real quick. Just go with all of them no. and see if it happens to fix it. Ah, uh, I'm still player one. Okay. Last one. Try this. No. No, no, dude, no. Now we've stopped Camilo as well? Or someone's sort of kind of doing no. something, but not really? Now I cannot move with the wasp, but I do can point stuff. That's Enjoy. weird. Okay, well maybe just, uh, we'll just switch that back a little bit, <laughs> so that Camilo can hopefully move. Um, okay. 
but it sounds like at the very least we would either need to exit versus mode or possibly even restart fire. Well, just look up set up new right and see what, what does it show. Okay, so it's just oh. two. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that this might be a reset fire angle. Uh, Likely. Is it identifying a second controller? It is not here. This is just, just pyre. Yeah. That's not remote play, it's pyre. Things are super cool. Okay. So in that case, yeah. Well, we can try. Try exit, sure. Try this. Uh, I'll, I'll replug. Okay, let's cross our fingers. The pyre hearts shall take on the tempers. Welcome. Who shall conduct the rites? Ignarius. Okay, speedy Ignarius. Of course, we still have that triple demon request. The so the players may look to set things up the same way they did before. The bigger question is just can we get the controls to work properly this time round? Hopefully, we will have a little bit better luck. Leeching Jody. The speedy Iggy. The Titan Tooth Visible left. The meta is blessed. Okay, so this is the key question. Okay, I, I come over. Looks good. I think we're in the clear here. There is the Titan Tooth. The core has it back with Jody. Jody blocked. But then banishes one of the defenders, gets the orb back, only to be banished soon thereafter herself. Camilo regathers. Oh, Thor was looking for the, the double banishment there. Oh, and Camilo gets a little greedy, but does have time for the Brazen Manor. Gets blocked, though. Thor has it back. Knocks back one defender, tries to throw, but doesn't have enough range on it, because he had to cut it short. Camilo. Back to Iggy. Iggy. Brazen Manors. Blocks. Has the orb back, though. Now banished. Here's Core. His Peleth. Ops to throw. Not the maximum, though. Cuts a little bit short. 24 out of the possible 30 damage there. Ooh, Iggy. Blocked. Now has it back for Camilo. Ooh, and he is playing Hopscotch. And it does work. He does get in here. 30 damage on that plunge. Now Camilo with just Vizpaleth. And Vizpaleth goes down, Camilo. Vulnerable here, at least until Jody makes her return. Speaking of which, there's Jody for Kor, who got knocked way back from the Titan Tooth. Jody again for Kor. Banished here. Camilo. Now it is Jody, but she goes down. Oh, and that banishing throw from Camilo didn't quite work out. Nearly backfired. That time it does connect. I just barely avoided the cast that time as well. <laughs> the craziest voice line just then. Uh, 
hardcore. It's a three on one here. Ms. Paleth against the world. Ms. Paleth goes down, but does buy enough time for Jody to make a return. And the opposing Jody sets up a brazen manor. Gets the orb back and sneaks oh, through, and that was a leeching Jody. So technically speaking, that was a net 60 point play, the highest possible amount of value you can get from a single score. But Milo answers here, plunging for a quick 30. That was his Jody. Oh, and that's another quick 30 damage demon plunge. Icky. For Kor nearly moonwalked his way in. Your exile shall return ere long. Oh, oh Camilo with a, an interesting Titan II the fact there. Buys himself a little time to transition from defense to offense. Does still go down. Jody for Kor. Technically his preferred score, as we saw before. Has the highest potential terms of leech. Camilo moves in two pieces, loses one of them, but plunges with the other. I believe they call that one the Demon Gambit. And it's working for Camilo now. Or dispossessed and now banished. Camilo now with just Fizbaleth. But works the banishing throw in there. Once again, turning defense into offense as Fizbaleth turns into a one demon army. And with that throw, means Camilo's still at full strength here after having plunged for. Seemingly, almost all of his previous scores. Still finding a way to make it work with the two demons. Now with the potential for all three. Oh, and the boat magic to boot! Camilo takes the win. GG. Well played, you two. Alright, well, let's head on back. Until the next right. And let us know, chat, if there's anything we'd like to see for the next one. Uh, we do have Knights of the Sea for the song from Anor, but otherwise, the rest is up to you. Oh, that's true. I do. I think I do remember this now. <laughs> All right, but not seeing anything request-wise at the moment. Of course, if you don't have anything in mind, we can always just leave it up to the players to take whatever they want. That is also an option. So perhaps... Oh, hold on! No, we will not do that. Everyone did need to know. True. True. Also, everyone should know we are turning Customize off again here for more randomized Exiles, Masteries, and Talismans. It's important for a fulfilling life. Alright, well, let's get this one started now. <laughs> it's true. It's true. I'd love to hear, I know like all of the behind the scenes for how that line came to be. How do you explain to Logan, the voice actor who did that? 
This, you see, this is what I'm looking for you to do in this case. I need, I need a little more, a little more energy. Can you extend it a little bit longer? I'm, I'm just not feeling the brrrr quite enough, you know? Actually, yes, how many takes did that take? <laughs> right? No, 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 you're not pronouncing it quite right. Alright, well, in the meanwhile, Camilo is playing a right and is plunging for 30 with his demon. That was Jody. She is now gone for this round, though. Now, Raji. And Ulmer for core. Throws that one in for 20. Is that a Titan Tooth Orlek? Oh man. Yes. That is uh, quite quite the steal for Core to get that in a customize off match. But Camilo, in control at the moment. As with Righteous Flame, that means that it's 30 damage and also 10 leech back. Restoring a little bit of health to Camilo's pyre. But everyone down on Camilo's side, at least until Raji makes his return. Or though, with that Orlek, ooh, not quite quick enough. Camilo, meanwhile, banishes everyone. But, uh, can be a little hard to pick up the orb sometimes when it's right next to the portal. That was the case then, but Camilo still able to make it happen. Through the portal he goes, and into the pyre he goes for a 30 damage plunge. And one more score may be all that he needs here. Of course, hard to know if might have a, a right light, the 20 rekindling talisman with customized off yet. You never really know unless you can confirm all of the talismans, but apparently there is no right light because that throw will be the deciding score. GG. The right is done. Now we need to know about the Titan toothbrush. That should, that should be a new talisman we create that cancels Titan Tooth. The Titan Toothbrush. Until the next right. Mm. I mean, how bad would it be that it, the sun when you catch the orb? Like, I guess like shooting star, but instead of killing sunny, so it's directly worse, actually. Oh no. I mean, we don't actually need to make that, but it would be funny no, if we did. Not. All right. Well, anyways, let us know if there is anything you guys would like to see for the next one, or if you have any ideas for how to implement the Titan toothbrush. Okay, we're back to, I assume you mean, the, the double ring setup for the talismans. Okay, double, double rings confirmed is the talisman request. I am the wrong person to ask Edgy Shrek, but we do have several people hanging out today who have been involved in creating the mods that we run on Pyre. This is absolutely a modded version that we work with. I cannot speak to the other Supergiant games though. Yeah, that's, that's what I've heard is that in general, the modding scene is much more active for Hades.
Alright, but not seeing anything setup-wise for this match. Oh, besides the, uh, the talisman request. So I suppose we still have that. Alright, why don't we jump in, in that case. The Pyre Hearts versus the Tempers. Welcome. Alright, so yes. Who shall conduct? The we do have the double ring talisman request. Alma. Dalbert. Kord did not take one of the rings, at least not with his first exile. But uh, Camilo put one on Dalbert. That means Kord will need to put rings on both of his remaining exiles, one of which will be Snadra. the one with the other ring? Yes. <laughs> Alright, you know, we can't say we know very much about Palmas, but hey, maybe, uh, <laughs> right? Thorn Tizo is the final choice for Camilo. Oh wait, who uh it must have been Gilman. It must have been Snadra and Gilman on Kor's side. Can't remember how their interactions go in the Beyonder Crystal. I mean Snadra is pretty critical of just about everyone you bring into the Beyonder Crystal, right? Well there is Dalbert plunging for 20. Gilman? <laughs> right? Palmas. Tizo. Tizo down. That means everyone down on Camilo's side for time for, for Core to throw that in for 15. Palmer throw intercepted. Core gets it back, only to be intercepted again. Camilo takes the portal that takes him approximately two feet, but it does give him the infinite stamina wasn't quite enough to get him into the opposing pyre. Once again, Portal doesn't take him far, but the stamina does. As this time, it's enough to set him up for a 20 damage plunge. Palmer. Yes. A little hesitation there. <laughs> Camilo was uh, stuck with a sap that probably was not going to be able to get there in time, <laughs> then switched over to the other exile who was further away. But, uh, Cor, uh, or gave him a chance, I suppose. This time, the throw much quicker, though. Oh, Kor going for a little bit of uh, wall-bouncing strats there. Or at least it, it seemed like it. And Camilo goes the sneaky reverse psychology no-jumping Kerr route, setting up Dalbert for a 20 damage plunge. And uh, Kor trying to do something similar with Almer, but Camilo did not fall for it. Palmas, oh, sniped by Almer. Almer follows up, finishing the job with a 20 damage throw. Almer stopped this time. Dalbert narrowly avoids banishment and throws it in for 10. Palmer first to the orb, throws it for 20, and that drops Camilo down to 5. Now, Camilo does have Palmas, may have rekindling, although he doesn't tend to take it on his saps, or at least it's not a given that he has that. Here's Tizo on the attack. Dalbert, though, 
Tries to go through the portal. But Core had it covered. Core now with Gilman. He stops. Almer. Oh, Camilo has it back. Dahlberg with that stamina. Fakes out Snadra. Goes for the throw. It's 14 damage. Which means all but uh, Tizo have enough damage for Camilo right now. If it's a full damage score, at least. A throw from Dalbert is insufficient. It would need to be a plunge, but that's exactly what it is. GG. Well played, you two. Let's head on back. Until the stars align. All right, so let us know, chat, if there's anything we'd like to see for the next one. Otherwise, of course, we can just Leave it up to the players to take whatever they want. That's an option as well. And seeing no requests at the moment, that may end up being what we go for here. Except, as soon as I say that, customize off. The exact opposite. All right, let's get going. Oh, wait. Okay, I heard the water. I heard the water, but it's the fall of Solium, not the boat. It is a crone, a cur, and an imp for core. And on Camilo's side, it's double sap and a worm. Here's Manly for Camilo. Going for the, uh, the zero distance throw on Manly. Pass to himself. Tech. Coro. Momentum. Got the better of him. Landed in the sapling aura. Went down in the process. Core goes down here with Bertrude. Camilo. Now, Camilo is accustomed to using saps, even offensively. But that is with his preferred talisman choices, and it might prove to be more challenging this time. When uh, he doesn't know what the talismans are, I kind of doubt that they are more offensive sap talismans and with two saps that means could be challenging to manufacture offense we'll just have to see core steam perhaps a little more well balanced so to speak at least from the initial eye test but we still don't know many of the details like star sign and titan tooth oh one of Camilo's exiles. I didn't catch which one that came from, though. Lady River. Oh, it's her. So she stuns the defender, and that gives her plenty of time to throw that one in for 15. And exploding saplings for... Volfred, at least. Exploding... Is that... Messenger Imp for Core? If so, there's a chance he already had a talisman to do that. But he plunges here for Dal with Dalbert. That's 20 damage. Which means he's at least the first mastery on the right side. Lady River, down. And that means... Oh! Camilo, I assume that came from a, a numbing gust. 
preventing Core from sprinting, jumping, throwing, or using any other special abilities. Core threatening to set up a portal on top of Camilo's pyre. Meanwhile, Camilo says, all right, I don't care. I'll just score and reset whatever portal you might be trying to make. Bertrude, cornered a bit here. Core moving in aggressively with Messenger Imp. Now sets up that portal. One that is, if not an automatic score upon going through it, it's awfully close. And there it is. Sets up Bertrude. That would be, presumably, Core's preferred score, at least the maximum damage there. So 30 from Bertrude. There is the Titan Tooth on Lady River. Oh, but she still goes down. Can't finish the job on that occasion. And Core. Yeah, it is. It is Messenger Imp who has the exploding talisman. There's a chance he already had a mastery for that, in which case it's uh, not the most efficient of setups. Of course, we don't know that definitively. But uh, Lady River throws this time for 11. Core with Messenger Imp. There's the explosion. Family. Back to Volfred. Old Fred now, the only one out here. At least until Dalbert makes his return. Oh, and nifty maneuver there. From Camilo. Gets the full 25 damage on that throw. Lady River, that throw looks to be short. to the saps. Corey able to get rid of that one. Dalbert avoids the exploding sapling. Has at least one additional jump. And as we said, the extra damage. Ooh, big implosion there. Bertrude avoids one cast and avoids another. And Camilo has 10 rekindling on the second life bar. Which means one score might be all that Core needs here. We know that is how much damage Dalbert has. Don't think Messenger Imp has enough, though. I'm not sure we've tested it, but it would require either a talisman or full left side mastery or bottom left side mastery. Somewhat unlikely, but here comes Dalbert. He slides around. Oh, but he can't quite find his way through. Oh, and he nearly somehow found a way to get that orb, despite all the saplings that Camilo had placed. There's the Titan Tooth, though. Camilo going back to what worked so well for him early on. It drops core down to 19. That means one score is potentially all Camilo needs. Though it would need to be coming from one of the saps. Bertrude down. Does Camilo try to force the issue with the sap, or does he settle for what is probably an easier score with Lady River? He does. It's 10 damage. Now that means even Lady River would have enough damage for Camilo. That is, assuming Core doesn't have some unexpected rekindling. In his case, it would need to come from a right light. Now here is the numbing gust... Slowing Cord down. Camilo does get someone back in time to block Bertrude's jump. Core gets it back here. There's no portal to use. And everyone down on Core's side. Dalbert comes back quickly, though. Camilo, that... Is that a quick-throwing sap? Because it seems yes. like it. Yes, yes it is. Okay. I saw it on the previous one where uh, he blinked to the side and threw it and I was like, that, that seems faster than usual. He got full damage out of that, but alas, might have been the difference maker there. Well played, you two. GG. Alright. No requests for this one. Players just going to take their preferred teams, core locking that in. All right.
In that case, I suppose we can jump straight back in. Quick throwing Volfred. I, I mean, it's technically allowed. It's the it's the range throw that is not okay. Yeah, song or sermon intro would still be allowed if anyone is interested in getting one of those in. But if not, then we may be good to go here. The fire hearts shall oh, we did not have an arena request. Tempers. But something tells Welcome. me. Core may be pleased. Who shall conduct? The rights. That we find ourselves now at the Glade of Liu. Will be an exploding Gilman in the first spot for him. Power casting Headwind is Camilo's first choice. Volfred. An extra starting pyre life from Volfred. Milo also goes Volfred, though in his case takes the Typhoon Bottle. Locks in Prayer Bead Stowaway as his final selection. Chris Camilo goes quick throwing Bertrude. Core first to the orb. Oh, and shields. Just long enough to protect a Gilman, although he does eventually end up going down nonetheless. Headwind. The only exile at the moment for Camilo. Hops around long enough to get Bertrude back. She has the quick throw. It is unblockable, but it is off target on that occasion. And it is Kor throwing it in for 12. Edwin, first the orb. I am not sure that Camilo expected to win that orb race. There is the false step on the stowaway. And uh, I think there was supposed to be a stunning claim there. I didn't see if Core actually got it off in time, though. As either way, it is still the stowaway getting the 20 damage plunge. Headwind down, as goes uh, Gilman and the stowaway. The unblockable throw from Bertrude. This time it does land. Gilman first explodes, taking out some of Camilo's exiles. That means once again it is uh, Hedwin, all by himself, trying to use that sapling to keep himself safe. And it worked! Bought himself enough time to get the other exiles back, but now Bertrude and, oh well, everyone down. In fact, that is actually preferable for Camilo in some ways, as it does activate the Typhoon Bottle. Technically, Core has the closest thing you can get to a counter to the Typhoon Bottle with Gilman. So even when he is not sprinting, he still has half-decent movement speed. Nearly quick enough to get in. Also quick from the stowaway, but she was not quick enough either. Core cuts off Bertrude. 
does eventually go down, as does Hedwin. That leaves Volfred back. And there's the stunning claim, though. Volfred can't do anything to stop the stowaway here, as Kor froze everyone except for the stowaway. Giving her what was functionally an uncontested throwing opportunity. Gilded. Down he goes. Headwind to Bertrude. Down goes, well, everyone. Typhoon Bottle active, that means. Stowaway. Tries to jump to the other side, but gets blocked in the process. Typhoon Bottle back up again. Headwind back. And. I think that was a black magic jump, because I'm pretty sure that was a, a gnarly angle the stowaway just scored from. Edwin, well shielded there. Bertrude goes for the throw, and it lands. Slightly less than the maximum there, 29 instead of the full 30. Have to see if that proves to make a difference. Well shielded once again to protect Hedwin. Hedwin does go down. Or slowed by the, the Typhoon Bottle. But back now with the stowaway. <laughs> Plunging for 20, drops Camilo down to 10. Which would mean one score would be enough for Core to, to uh, remove Camilo's starting prior life, but I did notice Camilo this time Took, I believe it was 10 rekindling on Volfred, so we'll still see a second life bar here. Not a big one, but there it is. And now, at this point, one score from Core could be enough to seal the deal. Well shielded there from Volfred, although he does eventually go down. Stowaway. She goes down as well, but there's the false step. Edwin. Shielded. Gets it back. And gets in. Oh, and he has Leech. 20 damage and 10 Pyre Life back. Now, that's not that much for Camilo, because it is still uh, possible for the Stowaway to finish it with one score. There are all the Black Magic jumps. Driving Camilo crazy until eventually Core plunges in for the win. GG. The right is ended. Well played, you two. All right. Now let's head on back. Until the next right. And let us know, chat, if there is anything we would like to see for the next one. That one was all up to the players. Not immediately seeing anything here, though, so of course we could leave this one up to the players as well in that case. Unless we have any last minute requests. <laughs> oh dear. Um, I mean, I can guess what symbol you might have been spamming, what emote. There may have been some meaning behind it. Boat, indeed? Okay, that, you know, may or may not have been the one that I anticipated you were using. Was there a, uh, a request of the arena variety to go along with that? <laughs> Basically, it was a, a boat request, right? Okay, yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. Back to the boat we go. The Pyre Hearts versus the Tempers. But the team composition that much Welcome. is still up to the players here. Who shall conduct the rites? And 
Core goes banishing throws on Barker. Milo goes banishing throws as well, though in his case it's with Pamitha. And speedy messenger imp for Core. Milo breaks out quarterback Manly. Four goes Flame Leech on Jodario. Now, final selection for Camilo, and it is an exploding Gilman. Parker somehow snuck through there and throws it in for nine. This time, though, Parker down to the fell swoop. Hamitha switches to Manly, and he has that range. From some distances, the sap throw is unblockable, and to be honest, I thought that would have been the case from there. Jody testing the boat magic and jumping in here for 30. Manly switches in. Ooh, then goes down to the big implosion. Four with Barker. A little bit of cur magic on that occasion. You don't see that too often. Or at least it tends not to be that dramatic, but it did help him out there. Now that was interesting from a boat magic perspective. A harp cast looking a little bit different on that occasion, and it sets up this 25 damage manly throw, who certainly didn't need the extra range on that occasion. But either way, Camilo will take it. Banishing throw from Barker, gets rid of one. Camilo now once again with Manly, although it is once again intercepted. And it's a quick Barker throw on the other side for seven. Barker again. And once again, it's a throw. This time it's 12. Now Camilo down to 22. That means uh, one score from Jody could be sufficient. Didn't catch as to whether Camilo opted for the rekindling this time or not. Barker banishes one with the throw, but does go down himself. Camilo now with just Pamitha. Oh, but she has the banishing throws. Can't forget that. Room now, perhaps, for Gilman. Well, everyone down now. Pam with the first to come back, but Camilo hesitates. Core goes through the portal and had the extra damage on his imp, so that actually was enough. And there is 10 rekindling for Camilo, but that means one more score. Likely all Core would need, and that was almost it right there. But Camilo gets the stop. Now gets the orb back. Core, defenseless. Manly. Testing his throwing arm. Once again, Core is in position to intercept. But now, once again, Core defenseless, at least for a moment. Camilo with Pamitha. Core back with it. Now his turn to do the banishing throws. Oh, and he gets the throw off, but it was quick enough 
but it did not deal enough damage. Camilo holding on with two fire life. As long as it's not zero, there's always a chance. But here comes Core. Gets the orb, gets the plunge, and gets the win. I'm gonna switch to controller. Yeah, you can win. I'm gonna switch to controller because my mouse is running out of battery. Oh, okay. Well, GG. Well played, you two. Until the stars align. Okay, and let us know if there is anything we would like to see for this one. And in fact, I mean, you could make the case it's getting late enough that this could even end up being our penultimate right here, the last one in which we take any requests before the liberation right. In which case, if there is anything we would like to see in particular before the night is over, that would make this our last chance to make it happen. Not seeing anything at the moment though, so in that case I suppose We'll just leave this one up to the players. Oh, hold on. <laughs> we got a random boat. Um, usually, on this occasion, I would probably lock in the arena that we just saw. However, we've had so much boat today that uh, I, will, I will just keep this random. But we did get a customized off request. We have just enough time to honor that. I, I mean, maybe we'll get another random boat. <laughs> Lilac's like, wait, no. To boat or not to boat? That is the question. <laughs> Such a dilemma indeed. But we're at the book instead, and I'm not sure we've seen the book yet today. So it is Imp, is that a, it's a Savage, and a Harp on Kor's side. It is a Kerr, a Savage, and a Sap on Camilo's side. Palmer. Oh, that throw looks a little out of the ordinary, or is that just me? Here is Zoxiana getting us started with a 20 damage Harp Plunge. She did not have Prayer Beads. She is now gone for this round. It's now Tizo hiding in the corner for Core, waiting until Almer makes his return, which he has now done, and he has now gotten the throw in. Good for another 20 damage. Almer. This time blocked, but not banished. Camilo has the orb back, though. Ruki stopped here. Oh, and Kor still had Almer hanging out on top of the pyre. Pass it over to him for the immediate plunge. Here is Camilo's Almer answering with a 20 damage plunge of his own. Almer back for Kor. Oh, somehow threw that directly past the defender who was right next to him. Ruki for Camilo. Goes the throwing route as well. In this case, just nine. Core. Throw intercepted. Now Camilo's Almer. Back to Ruki. His throw intercepted. Oh, room here for Core. But Camilo has ten rekindling. Holds on thanks to his sap mastery. 
but Core with the heart push plunge finishes the job. Gigi. The right is complete. Well played, you two. All right, and in that case, until the next right, let's head on back. And it may be time for our final right of the night, our liberation right, which would bring us to the fall of Solium. Sermon intro on, and we'd go uh, Never to Return Player 2 edition, meaning the tempers, and that is one that we don't hear very often. So no requests from chat for this one. We'll just have both players take their preferred teams to finish things off in style. And if you are ready, then let's get going. to the fall of Solium. Here you may step closer to achieving freedom. May further shame befall whomever fails. Pyreheart, stand prepared. Tempers, stand prepared. The right shall begin forthwith. All right, so as we said, this will be our final right of the night, our liberation rights. No requests for this one. Both players just taking their preferred teams, and for core, that means an Orez scale Gilman for extra jumping distance. For Camilo, it's a Vanishing Throws Pamitha. goes Exploding Snadra in the second spot. Tizo. Quick throwing Tizo for Camilo. And Speedy Ignarius is the last choice for Core. goes Leeching Gilman. So, all right, here we go, our final right of the night. Our liberation right core on the left representing the Pyre Hearts, Camilo on the right representing the Tempers. Best of luck to you both.
trickery. A blow against the adversary's power. The right has nearly ended. Demons vanished. A weak attempt, and yet it hit the mark. <laughs> Someone crossed the orb. Negligible effort. Yes. Ouch. It was flung right in. Tis taken. And there it is. At last. And there the it is. GG! Their adversaries they defeated utterly. The games. Thus ends the liberation right. Well, that was, as we were just saying, our final right of the night, our liberation right. So thank you everybody who participated in the rights today and everybody who gave us the requests in chat as well. With that, I'm gonna hop out of Discord. But I will catch you guys next time. And let me just quickly... Okay, now they, they know. They know. They're, they're out of remote play. But as I was saying, that was our final right of the night, our liberation right. So thank you everybody who participated in the rights today and everyone who gave us the requests in chat as well. This was, of course, Pyre Community Right Night, and if you're interested in getting more involved in multiplayer Pyre, then the best way to do so is by joining the Right Club Discord server, which you can do by clicking on that link right there. My name is Lids. I'm hosting these Right Nights, and my streaming schedule is Fridays. We are doing Mass Effect Andromeda multiplayer, Saturdays Mass Effect 3 multiplayer, and then obviously Sundays Pyre multiplayer. Lids vids on YouTube as well, posting the VODs for all those streams, so if you missed anything, you can catch it there as well. Also doing some Hades 2 and Helldivers 2 videos there. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot. Doing some uh, First Descendant streams, usually on the weekdays, just, or a weekday, just whichever day happens to be the easiest to, to squeeze in a stream after work. And VODs for that on uh, YouTube as well. But if you haven't done so yet already, of course, you can also hit the follow button. To get a notification for when I live, and you can also follow me on Twitter at LidsVids. I post there when I go live as well. But actually, the best place to stay up to date on all things Lids is by joining my Discord, which you can do by clicking on that link right there. That's gonna be it for me for tonight, so thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the stream, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>